Alright lads, with Warthunder coming up to its 10th anniversary, and considering I've been playing this game since 2013, I thought I'd share with you some of my tips. Now I'm going to assume that you aren't medically ill and can function, so tips like look both ways before driving into the open and not getting shot in the arse, I'm going to assume that you know that stuff, I'm not going to insult your intelligence, and these tips are going to be for the more serious gamer out there. So to start off, Grinding out several vehicles can be quite painful, especially if you only get one life of them in a game. However, if we go into the Warbond shop, you can see that we can purchase universal backups. This is how the majority of players use their backups. Don't spend Golden Eagle on them, just buy them from the Warbond shop. This is probably one of the biggest secrets in War Thunder that no one apart from content creators seem to know about. Once you've purchased a pack of these universal backups, you can redeem them on any vehicle you would like. I recommend putting it on vehicles that you're actively trying to grind out. For those that don't know, universal backups allow you to spawn in a vehicle in a second time in a battle. As I said, it's great if you're trying to grind out a certain vehicle. Alright, my second tip. Use your binoculars. For the majority of the early game of War Thunder, your gun sight will not be stabilised. There are a few certain exceptions such as the M4 Shermans, but even after a certain speed, those guns also lose their stabilisation but your binoculars are always stabilised, no matter what speed you are travelling. This stabilisation of your commander's binoculars, in combination with the great zoom, you can use your binoculars to actively scan the battlefield while you're driving. If you've ever watched any of my War Thunder streams, you'll notice that I am constantly in my binocular sight, as it gives you the best all-round balance when trying to do reconnaissance of the battlefield. And as I said, it's fully stabilised. This talk of reconnaissance brings me on to the two most important factors in War Thunder and in real war, logistics and knowledge. These two things are what I'd recommend all new players trying to improve on. War Thunder is not a twitch shooter. Having amazing aim isn't necessarily going to make you a better player. It's more about knowing your tanks, your maps and other little tips and tricks. So while this might be a cop out, most about being good at War Thunder is simply playing the game and getting in that experience. But in the recent updates, Guardian have added new ways to expedite this experience. But I'll cover that shortly. Let's start with the knowledge about shells. Generally speaking in War Thunder, a shell with a higher explosive filler is typically more deadly than a shell with higher penetration. For example, on several Soviet and German shells, you will have two APCBC rounds available. One has slightly more penetration, but less filler, and one with less penetration, but more filler. Typically, the latter shell is most useful. A few more millimetres of penetration isn't really going to help you on the battlefield, whereas more explosive filler is more likely to guarantee you a one-shot kill. This is probably most apparent on the Soviet vehicles, such as the T-3485. The stock shell, the BR-365K, has significantly more penetration than its other shell, the BR-365A, but the A variant of that shell has almost twice the TNT explosive filler, giving it significantly better post-pen damage. These two shells also highlight my next tip, and that is look for the angled penetration of a shell. If we compare both of these shells again, while the BR-365A has less penetration overall, if we take a look at its angled performance, or its ricochet performance, we can see that it has a 50% chance of bouncing and an angle of 63 degrees, whereas the B365K has a 50% chance to bounce at an angle of 60 degrees. Just because the K variant has more penetration doesn't necessarily mean it's better at penetrating armour, as contradictory as that sounds. The A variant has less penetration overall, but is much better against angled armour. This, in combination with the more explosive filler, makes the BR-365A a much better round. So be sure to check all the rounds available to your tank. The quote unquote top round or the tier 4 unlock round may not be the best shell to use. I then also recommend learning some knowledge about the tanks you'll be facing, as well as your tank itself. Gaijin has added the armour viewer, which allows you to look at the armour of any tank in the game, and test it against the ammunition of any tank in the game. This is quite a handy feature, it does have its issues with navigating the different types of tanks and ammunition, but if you find yourself being killed frequently by one certain type of tank, load it up in the tank viewer and see if your tank can kill it from the front. Most nations also have a trend with their vehicles. For example, most British tanks tend to have weak hulls, and most Soviet vehicles tend to have weak turrets. And German and American vehicles tend to have very compromising ammo rack locations. 
Which brings me on to my next tip. Use the X-ray viewer. The X-ray view shows you the location of not only crew concentrations, but ammunition concentrations as well. This is great for learning where to shoot a tank to get a practically guaranteed one-shot kill. For example, three out of the four crew members of a Leopard 2A6 are located on the left-hand side of the tank. So if you're facing a 2A6 from the front, try to shoot it in the left-hand side instead of the center of mass. And if we take a look at all of the Soviet vehicles currently at top tier, you can see that they have an ammunition carousel located just below the turret. This is why you've probably seen content creators constantly shooting Soviet tanks in the side or the lower frontal plate. This is the easiest way to destroy Soviet tanks and usually results in their turret popping off in a big explosion. As I said, knowledge in War Thunder is much more important than being quick on the mouse. But if you wanted to improve your knowledge of War Thunder and generally improve your skill in general, is there a way you can do this easily without wasting Silver Lions or frankly, embarrassing ourselves? Well, yes, there is. If we go into the top left corner, we can click on Battles and then Custom Battles, then go down to the bottom right corner and click on Create. You are then free to choose your own map as well as your own settings. You can create a custom battle for naval, helicopters, planes and ships. You can choose everything from the weather and time of day to the battle ratings of the opponents you'll be facing, as well as how many. These opponents of course will be AI controlled and won't be as good as an actual real life player, but you can put your own skills to the test. You can also easily use the custom battles to learn new weapon systems. I personally use custom battles for getting acquainted with Urta ground weapon systems, such as the Hellfires on the Apaches and the guarded bombs in planes. This is also a great way to set up control schemes and test them in real time. And because it is a custom battle using AI controlled bots, you aren't going to be using any silver lions if you die or need to respawn. So for example, if you want to get better at dropping bombs with a P47, take it into a custom battle and bomb away to your heart's content. You can also use custom battles for learning new maps. Something else I think important is learning the metas currently in War Thunder. For example, battle rating 9.0 used to be the staple of sub top tier. Most of the old premiums are battle rating 9.0 and this is where most of the gameplay took place. However, with the additions of the new 9.7 premiums and 10.0 premiums, the meta has now shifted, meaning most 9.0 vehicles now get dragged up to battle rating 10.0, substantially reducing their effectiveness. There are several of these metas currently in War Thunder, notably battle rating 4.7, 5.7, 7.3, 8.3, 9.7, and finally 11.0, at least for ground battles. This means if you take a battle rating 5.0 vehicle in your lineup, you are almost certainly going to get up tier to battle rating 5.7. This is very frustrating, and you might be better sticking to a lower battle rating while you try to grind out a tech tree. And for my last tip before we end this video, I'd recommend getting a mouse that has several programmable keys on it. Now I'm by no means recommending you spend money in order to play War Thunder, but for me personally, I can't just keep looking down at my keyboard. I have a programmable mouse and I have several important functions bound to the keys there, such as my binocular scope, firing my ATGMs, firing my machine guns, smoke keys, etc. Important keys that you need to activate quickly and you can't really spare the time to look down at your keyboard. That last tip is a bit of a cop out I know because most people can't afford a programmable mouse, but for me personally, getting a mouse like this has been one of the best things for War Thunder, as it means I don't have to take my eyes off the screen and can just press the buttons on my mouse. But again lads, you don't need to spend money to get better consoles or better equipment in order to be better at War Thunder, it's just not going to happen. Spending money on a new keyboard or mouse isn't going to make you better at the game. As I've said, War Thunder is about experience and logistics. Make sure to buy plenty backups and pop them on the vehicles you are grinding. Make sure you know the differences between your tank shells as well as the tanks you are going up against. If you feel like you want to improve in a certain vehicle, take it out into a custom battle. It's free and you won't be charged for any repairs. Play games, look on forums, speak to your mates about the current meta in War Thunder. For example, the current RRB from 9.0 to 10.0 is pretty toxic right now. So I try to avoid these toxic zones, as it isn't good for grinding and you'll just get burned out and frustrated. But anyway lads, that's all the tips that I've got for you today. Be sure to leave a comment down below giving your top tips to help any new players out there. 
Remember, if you're getting frustrated, just honestly just take a break or play something that's more chill. If you found this video helpful, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. And finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to my channel members. Again, thanks for watching, lads, and I'll see you in the next video.